G'day GDL people, Bruce here, Barking Dog Bim, and welcome to another edition of Scripting Adventure. And in this episode, we're going to learn about dynamic hotspots, both length editing hotspots and angle editing hotspots. With the length editing hotspot, we're going to learn how to edit it from one end, both ends, and how to hide the base hotspot. And with angle editing hotspots, we're going to learn how to implement it in both 2D and 3D and to get it spinning the correct way. Now, I've created this object specifically for the purpose of demonstrating how to script these dynamic hotspots. But if you'd like to know how I created it, because there's some really handy techniques at play here, then let me know in the comments and I'll do a video on that. I've created this object specifically to demonstrate length editing and angle editing hotspots. It's just a dial with a needle that can be angled and a readout just for feedback. I can change the size. So my A dimension is from there to there, 750. So I can edit that. And I can edit the angle of the needle. For example, so what I want to do is add a length editing hotspot that allows me to change my A parameter and an angle editing hotspot that allows me to change my needle angle. I don't have any hotspots placed in there at the moment. So I have the automatic hotspots generated by Archicab, which is the four bounding box hotspots plus one in the center. I have added a hot arc here just to make it easier to select. So if we open that object, now I can do that by having it selected, going to File, Libraries and Objects, Open Object. I can use the shortcut, or I can use this button here on my Edit GDL Library Parts toolbar. Edit GDL Library Parts, Open Object. I'll restore down using this button up here. On a Mac, it's right click on the tab and choose Undock. And I'll open my 2D, 3D and master script windows. So in my master script, I've declared all of the variables that I'm going to be using to create this object, all of the different sizes. And under the 2D and 3D scripts, I've structured my script with a header script calling a bunch of subroutines. So it will go to set attributes and set the pen, the cut pen, the building material and the surface. It'll go to hotspots, which at the moment I just have a single, I'll get rid of that, which at the moment is empty, goes to my text and then goes to my geometry. Each subroutine has a return and I have an end statement at the bottom of my header script so it doesn't keep on running down and I get errors. Same with my 2D script. We'll add the hotspots to my 2D script first, it's just a little bit easier to look at. And what we'll do is add just a normal hotspot. So let's have a look at our hotspots. You'll find the online help under gdl.graphisoft.com. Click on Reference Guide. And they're under their own heading, Six Graphical Editing Using Hotspots. And you can download the PDF version under Help, Online Resources, GDL Reference Guide. This is from version 27. Version 26 and earlier, it's under Documentation. It'll be GDL Reference Guide in here and under the PDF version, graphical editing using hotspots. So here are our hotspot statements. It'll be hotspot for the 3D version and hotspot 2 for the 2D version. We have a series of parameters that we must declare, and then everything in square brackets is optional, depending on what we want to do. And these are sort of stepped optional, so we can add a unique ID without having to add the rest of the parameters. We can add a unique ID and a parameter reference Again, without having to add the rest. That's how this syntax works. Square brackets, optional. So we're doing 2D. It'll be hotspot 2 with an X and a Y coordinate. So hotspots. Let's go hotspot 2. It'll be X and Y of 0 and 0. Now, when you're working on hotspots, dynamic hotspots won't work in your editor preview windows. You have to save it and look at it in the native Archicad environment. So save that, have a look. 
And there is my hotspot. You'll notice that the other automatically placed hotspots by ArchiCAD have disappeared. So that's the way it works. Once I start putting in my own hotspots, ArchiCAD will stop generating those. I can turn those back on under Details, Compatibility, Options, and Hotspots on Bounding Box. But typically, you just want to control it yourself. So that's nice and simple. Now I want to do a stretchy hotspot, and I want to stretch it from this point here. So if I turn on my axes, and if you want to know what that is, refer to episode 28. I'll link it up there. I'll save. So that is my origin here, my X across to there, and my Y in that direction. So under my 2D script, I want to do a length editing hotspot. What do I need for that? So under our help for hotspots, we've got a diagram here. And in the online version, just scroll down a bit, our diagram here, it's a bit clearer in the PDF version, where we've got our length editing hotspot. You need three hotspots in order to get a length editing hotspot to work. You've got a base hotspot here, which is type one. We've got our moving hotspot here, which is our type 2, and that will move backwards and forwards in line with our reference hotspot, which is type 3. And you'll notice that all three of these are on a vector. So the moving hotspot knows which direction to move in based on a vector drawn from it through the base hotspot through the reference hotspot. So these all have to be in a straight line in order for it to work. Under our syntax, after our coordinate declaration, we've got a unique ID, and that must be a unique number. That relates to how dimensions know which hotspot they're dimensioning to. Then we have param a reference, which is the parameter that we want to be editing. And in my case, it's parameter A. Then we have the flags, and the flags down here are the hotspots type and the hotspots attribute. So the type is the first three you use to declare a length type editing hotspot, and the subsequent four you use to declare an angle type editing hotspot. So we're wanting to do a length. We don't at this stage need a display parameter or a custom description. So let's have a look at how this works. We've got our type. Base hotspot is type 1, moving hotspot is type 2, reference hotspot is type 3. Base 1, moving to reference 3. So we need a unique identifier is our next one, and that could be 1, it could be 100, it could be 1, 2, 3. But the way you usually do this is you put in a variable. I've called it an ID. You can call it whatever you want. And this is declared in my master script, an ID equals one. So I can now use that anywhere. And before you declare your hotspot, you go an ID equals. So what I'm doing is I'm incrementing my an ID to make sure it's unique. The colon here means I can put two lines of code on a single line. So hotspot two zero zero unique ID. Next is the parameter I want to edit. And it is in this case, parameter A. Any length type parameter would be valid. Parameter A and my flag. So my first one is my base hotspot, and that is type 1. And I'll just put in a comment to make it easier for me to read, know which one's which. So now we want our moving type hotspot. So we increment our unique ID. We want that to be at this point here. So our base hotspot's at 0, 0. Our moving hotspot will be at zero in the X and A in the Y, and it will be type two. We've got our unique identifier, the parameter I want to edit, and it's type two, which is a moving hotspot. And then our last one is our reference hotspot. We want our reference hotspot to be on a vector in that direction, going from our moving through our base, off in that distance. And it can be any number larger than the zero zero in this direction typically though you just put in a one so it'll be zero in the x and it'll be minus one in the y and that will be type three which is our reference type hotspot i'll just get rid of my axes save 
And let's have a look. There's my diamond editing hotspot. And if I choose that and make sure it's on the stretchy move node pet palette option, I can edit my length. You can see the radius is changing. I can also type in my value, 600, and it changes. Excellent. Now the hotspot, base hotspot is showing here. Depending on the type of object you're creating, you may or may not want that to show. We can hide that if you want. And we hide that by using attribute J8, hide hotspot, which is meaningful for types 1, 2, 4, and 5. So it's meaningful for the base hotspot, the moving hotspot for the length, and the base and moving for the angle. I don't know why you'd want to hide the moving hotspot, but we'll do it for the base. And J8 is 128. So for type 1, we add 128. Save that, and this will disappear because it's hidden. Still have my stretchy hotspot here. And I can change my length, and my base hotspot is hidden. Again, depends on the object you're creating. You may want to show your base hotspot. Now, this editing hotspot allows me to stretch in this direction. What if I also want to stretch in that direction? We can do that with type J9, editable base hotspot for types 1 and 4. So type 1 is our length editing base, and type 4 is our angle editing base. And J9 is 256. So under here, instead of 128, we will go 256. Save our object. Now I have a editable hotspot here at the moving, and I have an editable hotspot here at the base. And in 3D, you'll get the same result. So let's put it in 3D as well. I'll just copy and paste this across to 3D. And instead of a hotspot 2, it'll be a hotspot just normal. Now, if I want to place multiple cursors in this new editor, I hold down my Alt key. I'm not sure what it is on the Mac. It might be Option. And I click where I want my cursor. And now I can edit all of these in one hit. Delete. I hit Escape to undo that multiple cursor. And a hotspot 3D requires an X or Y and a Z. So I'll put in my Z here. And again, I can put in multiple cursors. So I've got an X, a Y, and a Z for each of my hotspot declarations. My base, my moving, and my reference hotspot. Save that. Pay attention to what happens here. I've got a standard hotspot here and a standard one here. Now it's changed to my editing hotspot. At the moment, they're just at the base. If I wanted them at the top, I could just put in a cursor transformation here and add Z and add it up to where I wanted and then delete afterwards. So, so you know what I mean. Let's go add Z. Okay. Let's now add the angle editing hotspot. What's involved in that? So we've got a diagram here showing how an angle editing hotspot works. We have our base hotspot, which is type 4. We have our moving hotspot, which is type 5. Now, in my opinion, that circle should be down on the arc here. That's where you want the moving hotspot to be. And you have a center hotspot, which is type 6. So let's put those in. This is a little bit harder to figure out because you've got to get your trigonometry into this because you have a, a moving hotspot moving on an angle. But it's still doable. Let's work it out. So we want our base hotspot. First of all, we increment our unique ID to make sure it remains unique. We declare our base hotspot. And where is that going to be? I'll just reset this to default. And I'll just change that to 30. So the three hotspots we need. Our baseline will be running from there to there. Actually, not quite there. It'll be running through. 
be running through the tip of the hand. So our baseline will be running from there to there. Base point. Base point will be there. Center point will be there. And our moving hotspot will be here. So given that my X and Y axis, X, let's put my, bring my axes back into play. My X and my Y with my origin here. I need to find that point there for my moving hotspot. And this is a right triangle. So we'll do our, our base and our center hotspots first, because they're easy. So our base hotspot will be zero in the X, but it'll be hand length in the Y. And where do I get hand length from? That's from my master script, declared a variable there. I don't want to be changing parameter A, I want to be changing parameter hand angle, and this will be hotspot type four. So hotspot type four, angle type editing, base hotspot. And we'll put it in our center, which will be, center will be at zero, zero. My unique ID, hand angle, and the center is type six. Angle type editing, center of angle. So now I need to find the X and the Y for my moving hotspot. Just change the stuff we know how to change. So it'll be a type five, it'll be a moving. Now I need to find my coordinates. I ran through this in pretty good detail in episode 31. I'll link that up there as well and in the description. But our formula, we look at our right triangle formulas. If we know our hypotenuse, which we do, it'll be our hand length, and we know our angle, which we do, it'll be 30 degrees, then we can find our X and our Y in this diagram, X and Y. Don't confuse it with my X and Y in my model by using either cos A times the hypotenuse or sine A times the hypotenuse. And this diagram here, you can see it looks like this diagram here, it's just flipped. So Y will be our X coordinate and X in our right triangle formula will be our Y coordinate. So to find our X, we do cos AH and to find our Y, we use sine AH. Our X will be sine and angle multiplied by our hand length. Our Y will be the same, but instead of sine, it will be cos. Now this is getting a bit long, running off the end. If I want to bring a long line of code down onto another carriage return, just for legibility reasons, I can put in a backslash and that allows me to split the one line of code over multiple lines and GDL will still treat it as a single line. So I've got my X, which is sine. I've got my Y, which is cos. Got my unique ID and hand angle. Well, that should work. Let's see what happens. Well, let's also turn off my axes and clean up my guides a bit. Here's my moving hotspot right there. Excellent. What happens when I click on it? Hmm. Well, it's kind of working, isn't it? And it's kind of not. It's going the wrong way. And the way you fix that in 2D, 3D is different, I'll get to that in a minute, is with J10 attribute. Reverse the angle in 2D for type 6. So J10 is 512. In our 2D, for type 6, we add 512 to our center hotspot. Let's have a look. Now that's behaving the way we want, right? I'm dragging to the left. Excellent. 
Now I want to point out a behavior here with dragging an angle. So at the moment I have no limitations on my angle. I can change this angle in my settings dialog to be something ridiculous. You know, I could do 750 degrees and it'll just spin around until it gets to 750 degrees. If I edit it with an editing hotspot, the angle will get up to 360 and then reset to zero again. So I'm not controlling that. That's ArchiCAD resetting it to zero when I'm using a dynamic hotspot. It also, I can't go negative. So if I'm dragging it around to here, I want this figure, in this particular object, I want this figure to be a negative number because my zero is here. But it's not giving me that negative number. If, however, I've had this values command in my parameter script, I've just commented it out. If I activate that, and what that is, is it's limiting the range of my hand angle to negative sweep angle and positive sweep angle. And those are 60. So I've set up a variable in my master script to be negative 60 to positive 60. Now when I go to my object, I have limitations here of negative 60 to positive 60. And when I change my angle, I can't go any further past the 60. And when I come back past zero, it goes to a negative number, the way I want it to be. So that's how you do a 2D angle dynamic hotspot. You've got your base hotspot, type 4. You've got your moving hotspot, type 5, and your center hotspot, type 6. And you control which way it's turning with your J10 attribute. And you find your moving hotspot by using your trigonometry, your sine and your, your cosine calculations. Good. Let's have a look in 3D now. This will be the same calculations as in 2D with one addition. So I can copy that code straight from my 3D. Change these hotspots to just a hotspot instead of hotspot 2. Add in my Z coordinate, which I find easiest to just leave at zero and move the cursor to where I want it to be instead of trying to be funky with the coordinates. You keep them as simple as you can and then get your cursor where it needs to be using transformations. So I've got my base, my moving and my center with my hotspots. And what I also need is a reference hotspot. The reference hotspot, here's the description that the GDL reference guide gives you, very dry. The plane of the angle is perpendicular to the vector that goes from the center hotspot to the reference hotspot. Okay, very dry because it is just a reference guide. Basically what that means, I'll just comment these out, and I'll go put in a 3D line to run from 0 to 1 vertically. Basically your reference hotspot will be either up here or down here. And that will determine, that's like, say, an axis on a wheel that will determine the spin of your hotspot. If it's pointing up, your hotspot will spin one way. If it's pointing down, it will spin the other way. So let's demonstrate that. I need my reference hotspot. I'll just copy this one. Hotspot zero, zero, let's go one. And this is type seven, which is my reference hotspot. By the way, these comments are just for me. They have no bearing on the execution of the code. There's my hotspot down here. And if I click on it, can you see it's going the wrong way? I'm moving my cursor one way and the hand's going the other way because of the direction of that reference hotspot axis. I like to think of it as a, like a bicycle wheel with the axis of the bicycle wheel and the wheel will spin one way and you've got to turn it upside down if you want to spin it the other way. So I'll change 
this line. This line is just for us, by the way. You don't have to put this in your code. It's just a, a visual cue as to where that hotspot, where that reference axis is going. I'll change my reference axis to minus one. So now my axis is going down and my hand is spinning the way I want. It's following the movement of my cursor. Now I don't want that hotspot under there. I want it at the tip of my hand. So then I just add There we go, it's up there. Now I've got this hotspot here as well. This is my base hotspot. I don't want to show that. And so this is my base hotspot, type 4. And I want to hide that hotspot. Meaningful for types 1, 2, 4, and 5. So J8, 1, 2, 8. Base hotspot, 4 plus 1, 2, 8. There it's hidden. Let's get rid of this line. So there we have it. So to reiterate, length hotspots, you require three hotspots, a type one, which is your base, a type two, moving a type three, which is your reference. You can hide your base hotspot using attribute J8, which is 128. You can turn it into an editable base hotspot by using attribute 256 which is j9 which allows me to stretch the base as well as the moving hotspot and your angle hotspots require four types in 3d which is your four base hotspot five moving hotspot and six center hotspot and your reference hotspot which is like an axis or an axle in 3D determining the direction of the spin. And in 2D, your length hotspot follows the same principles as your 3D hotspots, and your angle hotspot only requires three. Your base, your moving, and your center. And you determine the spin by using attribute 512, to reverse the spin in 2D. Okay, we are done. Now you know how to script both length editing dynamic hotspots and angle editing dynamic hotspots. If you found this tutorial useful, give it a like. If you want to learn more about GDL and ArchiCAD, then subscribe to the channel. Until next time, go script something, anything you get better by doing. I'll see you later.